There are two major inconsistencies linked to that first 1905 Albert Einstein paper. The first is related to the force binding electrons increasing with their respective distance. The second inconsistency is related to the discrete nature of phenomena. Of course in 1905, the Rutherford, 1911, and Bohr, 1913, atomic theory was not yet established. Before, scientists thought that bodies were made of atoms, the nucleus, within a sea of electrons. Furthermore, let there be a number of electrons which are bound to widely separated points by forces proportional to their distances from these points. The problem is that Albert Einstein assumed that electrons are linked by forces proportional to their distance, although it was already established that electrons only repel. The major inconsistency is to assume that a force could be proportional to the distance. It will increase infinitely. This is a full nonsense. The second error is more general. The main point of the rationale of Albert Einstein is that the bound electrons are also to participate in conservative interactions with the free molecules and electrons when the latter come very close. We call the bound electrons oscillators, they emit and absorb electromagnetic waves of definite periods. According to the Maxwellian theory, energy is to be considered a continuous spatial function in the case of all purely electromagnetic phenomena including light. Albert Einstein proposes a quantum view of light emitted at definite periods, the remote origin of photons, fully opposed to Maxwell theory of light. It would be electromagnetic and, as such, continuous. The inconsistency of Albert Einstein is that the third 1905 paper related to the special relativity theory and the 1915 paper related to the general relativity theory are both based upon continuous fields fully described by continuous equations. To be consistent Albert Einstein should have stated that the field continuous equations for both electromagnetic and gravitational fields are not the reality but only a mathematical representation of the phenomenon. The question now is, is there a physical representation of what is occurring in nature beyond the mathematical approach? The mainstream answer, no. They inherited the positivist approach of August Kant and William James. Mathematical equations are the end of science. The same positivists are the fathers of Marxists, searching for the end of history. No, it's not the end. There are thousands of alternative theories proposed in the internet.